Morning class, I'm Will Kemp from Will Kemp Art School and this week we're going to be painting this lovely impressionistic Aperol Spritz. We start straight from the painting and that just means that we can get straight into the colour mixing by using a pale umber colour ground. And this is from the Galleria paint range from Windsor and Newton. And this paint range has got a really nice paintable consistency straight from the tube. But I'm just going to add a little bit of water to achieve the mix. So it's got a slightly thinner consistency to paint onto the ground. And then once that's dried out, I then sketch out the glass with an HB pencil. And then just to reinforce some of the dark accents, I use a paint marker and this is by De La Rowney. And what's nice about this paint marker is you can put in any paints that you like to it. So it comes as an empty marker and then I've put in some high flow paint and this is from Golden Paints and it's got a really thin consistency. And this is in a sepia color that I just drip into the empty marker and then I can use that to draw out. And this just helps me really set up that straw, which I found is so integral to holding the whole composition together. I then blocked in the darkest areas with burnt umber, which was diluted with water. So the more water that I added to the umber, the thinner the application became and the lighter value it looks. So you alter the value by altering the dilution of the paint. And then I blocked in the lightest areas with some titanium white. And this just gives us this value structure underneath the painting before we actually begin to add the color. So setting up in the studio, I'm going to be using water again as the main dilutant and then introduce some acrylic glazing liquid gloss. This is from Golden Paints and the glazing liquid gloss is brilliant for diluting your paints when you're working vertically at an easel because it prevents the paint from running down the surface and holds the paint in a paint film. So on the left, I start with titanium white, then ultramarine blue, burnt umber, cobalt violet hue, and these are all from Golden Paints, then some burnt sienna, and just make sure that this one's from Windsor and Newton. It's got this really lovely undertone to it, a fabulous glow. And then finally, some cadmium yellow light, and that's also from Golden Paints. So to start with, I'm just going to work on the background of the painting and mix a grey by mixing the burnt umber and the ultramarine together and then lightening that mix with some of the titanium white. And because of the tonal blocking, I'm just going to be following the drawing that I've already got established, trying to match the tones. So starting with this cool grey on the left hand side and then once I've got that initial mix in, I can add other colors into that. So there's this darker area here on the skirting board on the left. And then again, just darken it more. So I've got a subtle range of values in the shadows. And if you add a touch of the glazing liquid, it will just give that paint a bit more flow. You can see on the edge of the table, it goes a little bit lighter and even a little bit warmer on the edge. So just a bit of the burnt sienna into that and a touch more yellow. 
I mean, it, it might need to go a bit warmer, but let's see how that looks. So on this side of the painting, you'll notice that when I'm painting in these marks, I'm painting in diagonally. And I'll often go over the edge of the drawing. And this just helps to give movement into your brush strokes and it will stop it feeling as if you've like drawn around a shape and then just giving it a bit of a broken edge to the brush marks. And that's half due to the texture of the canvas and then half to do with how smoothly I apply the paint. So here when I add some glazing liquid, you'll notice how it will just smooth over onto the surface. So you lose some of that texture, but it gives more of a light glazing effect over the top. So again, just working around the edge of the glass and you can see in the reference image, it's got like a light glow coming from around the glass. I also want to get this sense of the tabletop underneath. So just by creating a semi-opaque glaze, I can paint over to get that illusion of a wooden surface. So you can see how the paint hasn't even dried underneath and I'm just breaking into that. And I, I don't mind that breaking into the colors. I quite like it. And I'm going to block in the figure on the right hand side and it's a really similar grey to the one we've already mixed and I've just got a little bit more warmth to it. You can notice that reflection from the top of the table is kind of reflecting onto the outfit. So again I tend to use the burnt umber and the ultramarine blue to mix a grey tone because you can easily go warmer by adding more of the brown or cooler by adding more of the blue so you can tweak your grey from there. So just following those shapes and just really simply blocking them in. So now I'm going to introduce a bit of the cobalt violet hue and this is such a nice colour and it can be a quicker way of working than if you had to mix a muted violet colour. You could of course take the red and mix it with the ultramarine blue but sometimes just having a few more colours out the quicker it will be to mix closer tones because the palette is already close to what you're trying to match. So here just getting a rough block into where the car shadow is falling from the drink. 
and I can use this same cobalt violet that's in the shadow of the drink to then make a rich colour that I can add into the fabric on the top left of the painting. So until now, I'm still using the flat brush and just working around the shape of the straw. And I can add some more white and just to lift that value and add a bit of variety. There's also this strong central line that I can go even lighter on, on the center of the fabric. And then use some of that mix, just with a little bit of glazing liquid to work over the figure on the right hand side. So now if we look at the image, we've got a purple triangle of hues. The top left has got the strongest purple in the fabric, then on the right, and then this less saturated area of purple at the very bottom. So this very subtle triangle of background purple going around the image. So we know that it's a wooden tabletop, so you might think that it's going to be a warm colour. But because of that cool light coming in, it's going to change our perception of what the colour is. So there's actually quite a lot of muted green hues and it's quite a light value because of the reflected light. So I brought this in to start with, and I'm just gonna add a bit more white and that should work quite nicely. This is a cobalt blue hue. You can see how it goes slightly cooler because of the blue. And this is really what I want to emphasize in the center around the glass, because that's the light coming in from the back.
And it's also going to work as a contrast to the vibrant oranges of the drink because a blue and an orange are opposite colours on the colour wheel. And then I'm just working a broken brush effect over the rest of the surface. And here you can just be a bit more impressionistic, leave some of those first colors showing through, some of them covered up, and it just gives that sense of uh, movement for your eyes and lots of layers in the surface. So now I'm going to create a little range of colours using a inky blue as the base. It slightly goes towards indigo, so adding a bit of the yellow as well. And then I can have that for the shadow that's behind the door. And then add more white into that to lift the value and some of those lovely greeny blues in the background. It feels quite strong to start with this colour, but then when we add the white, what it will help to do is lighten it and mute the colour out. Okay, that's, that's quite nice.
So again, just constantly looking how the light's falling. There's a couple of these reflections on the top of the glass and then a couple of brighter areas on the surface of the door. So here I can go in with a bit thicker paint just to add more impasto marks into those areas in the center. And then for more details, I'll just swap to the round brush. This is the round from Rosemary & Co. And just painting a few more details of these lighter reflections. So now we're on to the straw and this took quite a while so I thought I'd speed it up for you so you can see the process quicker. But again I'm just using the same inky blue as the base and then lightening up with a cobalt blue in the centre and then going into the final lightest areas of the edge of the straw. And this just helps to give that sense of a three dimensional form kind of coming around out at us. So just make sure that you go dark enough on the straw so that when you put the light on the edge, you know, you've got a value range. So it gives that illusion of a cylindrical object. 